So I don't know if any of you have any questions about history or horrible history or whatever, um, and I'll do my best to answer it. If you have anything you'd like to ask, please do. If not, I can tell you more about celebrity. Whatever you want. I don't know how much time we got left. Uh, I'm gonna. We got 15 minutes. Okay. So yeah, any questions? Please feel free to fire away. Right at the back. You might have to shout. Sorry. How do you get involved with horrible histories? Okay. So I got involved with horrible histories. Um, Kind of a bit of luck, really, but also I've always loved comedy growing up. I loved comedy when I was a teenager, and I um, used to write comedy at university, and then I uh, wrote my master's thesis. So you do a degree, you, you leave school with your A-levels, you go to university, you do a degree, and then you do another degree afterwards called a master's, and I wrote my master's on Monty Python's Holy Grail, which is a brilliant film. A lot of you won't have seen it. It's a very, very silly, very, very funny film about King Arthur. And I love that film. And I wrote my master's thesis on, on ideas of accuracy and truth. And can cinema ever actually tell a true story? Because, you know, stories are meant to be fun. And history is complicated. So I wrote my master's on that. And then I went into telly and I made documentaries and dramas. And then one day, pure luck was in the building. And I heard my boss talking about horrible histories. And I basically begged him. I got on my knees and I was like, I have to work on this show. I love comedy. I love history. I wrote my master's on Monty Python. Please let me come and work on your show. And he was like, all right. And I was like, oh, that was easy. Um, and so I got to work on it for 13 years and still make it. So yeah, I'm incredibly lucky. But I suppose I've always loved comedy as well as history. So I guess I'm quite suited to it. Hello. Oh my goodness, favourite history fact. There are 24,000 facts in Horrible History so far. So choosing one is tricky. Um, I have a few. Uh, it depends on the day. Um, I quite like that King Tut well, um, the Pharaoh Tutankhamun, he was buried with 145 spare pairs of underpants, which seems like too many or not enough. I mean, it's either, either you're committing to it and you're having an afterlife of eternity where you need a million underpants, or one pair, but 145 is very, it's very specific. Um, people often ask me what's the goriest fact, and I'll probably say that, I mean, um, William the Conqueror exploded in his coffin at his funeral, um, and then the church caught fire. It was a bad day all round, um, and that's quite an odd one. And then, what's another sort of strange fact? Um, well, the one that's quite surprising is that um, the oldest dentistry in history, so the oldest ever drilling into teeth was 9,000 years ago in the Stone Age. People did fillings in the Stone Age, which is amazing. And we have, them. we have, you know, they've recovered the bodies, and you can see beeswax has been put into the hole where the drill has gone in, and then they put beeswax in. So people were doing dentistry in the Stone Age, which is incredible. So yeah, those are my favourite facts, probably. Hello. Um, my favourite king or queen? Well, it depends what I'm looking for. Because then you can say, who was the best one, in terms of like most competent, best at their job. Or you can have, who was the most amount of drama, and that's more fun. Um, most competent, highly underrated, Henry VII. Anyone heard of Henry VII? No, a lot of shaking heads. He was the dad of Henry VIII. He was really good at his job, but he was a bit mean, and we don't talk about him very much. But he, he was good at it. Um, but the most fun one, probably, would be someone like Louis XIV. Uh, he loved ballet and theatre and plays and paintings, um, but he was, he, was quite, he was quite the character. He had to have bum surgery, very, very dangerous, and when he had the bum surgery, uh, everyone else at court also wanted the bum surgery, even though their bums were fine, because whatever he did became fashionable. So everyone was like, yeah, my bum's also painful. And the doctor was like, your bum is fine, stop it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good one. Hello. Oh, that's a good question. How many years have I studied history? Well, I started studying history at A-level many years ago, and then I went to university 20 years ago last month. So at York University, lovely York, and so I guess probably, probably 20 years, I think is probably about right. And in that time, I've read probably about 3,000 books is probably about right, um, which is part of my job. So I, I know quite a lot, but there's lots of things I don't know, which is part of the problem as well. So. Uh, I'm going to go over this side again now. Uh, yeah. What is your favourite horrible history book? Favourite horrible history book? Oh, ooh, good question. I don't think I can choose, but I really like 
Um, I really like um, what's called etymology, which is a very fancy word, uh, which means the history of words and where they come from. And there's a great book about like weird words and their origins and, and sort of strange stories of, of where they come from. So I think the, the words book is pretty fun. But I'm also very keen on uh, measly middle ages, because you know there's some, there's some nasty stuff in there. It's a bit of fun. Hi. Favorite child? Uh, my daughter, probably. But, um, but apart from her, from history, there was a very famous uh, child actor called Master William Betty uh, 200 years ago. Uh, he was so famous, this is 1804, he was so famous that people smashed the doors to get into the theater. He was 10 years old, people smashed the doors off, people had fights to get the seats, people pulled guns out, like, people were killed to go and see this guy. People in Parliament, the Prime Minister, left a meeting to go and see this actor. And he was incredibly famous for two years, and then he hit like 12, and everyone went bored now, and he was no longer famous anymore. He had two years of being incredibly famous. So apart from my daughter, Master William Betty would be my choice. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. What inspired me? Um, I love people. I'm very nosy. I like, to, I like to know what makes people tick. And history is the study of people, and it's everyone who's ever lived. There have been 108 billion people since the beginning of our species, and there are only 7 billion on the planet now. And I love figuring out why they did things, and why are people different, you know, different to us, think differently, do different things. Uh, so I love being nosy and, and going, what the, why, why that? That's so weird. Um, yeah, let's do it over there. Yeah. I didn't quite hear that one. Say again. If I wasn't a historian, what job would I have? Uh, I would love to be a neuroscientist, which is a very fancy word for brain scientist. Because again, I'm nosy and I want to know what makes people do stuff. And if you can get in their brains and sort of poke it, maybe you can find out. That's, it's probably more complicated than that. I imagine it's not just brain poke. I suspect that the PhD is a lot, a lot harder than just giving it a prod. But I imagine that brain poking is a fun job. So that would be my backup plan if, if history hadn't worked out. Uh, yeah. I have written three books over there, and I've just written a children's book, which is out next Christmas. Uh, so uh, you can't buy that yet. So technically, I've written four books. Um, but three are available over here. Um, you don't have to buy one, it's fine. Um, so yes, for four, and then I've got to write two more children's books as well next year. So I guess I'll have six by the end of it next year. Uh, who have I seen? I go, here, yeah, hello. Taking pictures Well, this is a great question, right? So pictures in the past are difficult for us. So we have paintings, obviously, which were done. Paintings were very popular in Tudor times and in the 1700s. When I showed you the painting of uh, Dr. Henry Sacheverell, the first celebrity, he had been painted, and then there was a thing called engraving. Engraving was a technology where you could copy a painting and sell it really cheaply to loads. It's basically photocopying. It's really fancy photocopying, but like 300 years ago. But we have art going all the way back to the Stone Age, back to the caves in France, like uh, Chauvet and Lascaux. And we have amazing art from the Egyptians and from the Babylonians 4,000 years ago, and ancient China, and there's amazing African art. Um, so we have lots of images from all over world history, but paintings are obviously quite handy. And then in the 1840s, we get photography. And that's the best, because then you can see what people really look like. Although, and people don't know this, in the 1840s, they also invented Photoshop. They didn't have the technology of like, being able to click a mouse, but they would be able to remove wrinkles, they can make people look slimmer, they can make them look younger. We've got lots of portraits, very famous writers, that are looking a lot more glamorous than the real person. And we know that actually they would sometimes touch up their image to make them look, you know, look younger. So there's nothing really new with celebrity culture. Yeah. Am I a celebrity? No, I am not. I do not meet the criteria. I made sure of that. It's a horrible life. I would hate to be a famous person. I'm very lucky to do a nice job, and I love coming in and chatting to you, but I do not want to be famous. It's very weird. It's, I did a podcast last week with some famous people, and their life is quite strange. And uh, they were on Made in Chelsea, 
and uh, they get sort of recognised in the streets, and it's 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 an odd life. So no, I'm very happy writing books and saying hello, but I uh, you know n n <laughs> weird. Um, so no, no no to celebrity. Yes, thank you. What's my favourite? Historical sites. Sites? Ooh. That is a good question. There's a lot of good ones to go to. And then there's some sort of sneaky hidden ones that people don't know about. Um, so, one of my favourite things I've seen that's very rare is in Westminster Abbey, there's a thing called the Cosmati Pavement, which is a beautiful mosaic, and it's uh, 800 years old, and uh, it's where every king and queen of England was crowned and you're not allowed to see it normally. And because I was making a documentary for television, I got to go and have a look at it, and it's really good. And that was a kind of special, precious moment. I was alone in the cathedral. It was midnight. It was lit by candles. It was a bit like Harry Potter, but without all the sort of, you know, scary stuff. Um, that's very, very exciting. But there are some amazing sites all over the country that have got amazing history. And you live in a brilliant part of the world. You know, you've got all sorts of history up, up the road and around the corner. Um, so you can go anywhere and find good history. So you don't have to travel too far. But if you can travel, then do. You know, there's fantastic you know, pyramids in Egypt, uh, the Great Wall of China, amazing things. Maybe one day you'll go and see. But I think actually you'll find Yorkshire is pretty good in terms of its sort of, you know, what's in there. Um, and some further afield, Lancashire, less good, obviously. But, you know, there's some, there's, there's some good stuff in there. So yeah, we're very lucky. We live in a, a country with lots and lots of history that you can go and see very cheaply. Yeah? Um, what period of history do you know Well, uh, penicillin uh, wasn't available until 1945. So any earlier than that, and I would die immediately of a small cut to my finger or a, you know, eye infection. Um, I have asthma. I, I would literally have died any period in history until the invention of asthma drugs. So um, people ask me that a lot, and I always say, I'm very happy now. <laughs> it's quite pretty good now. If I had to travel, I'd go to the 1960s, because I, th I think the music's pretty good. Um, and I'd like to see Jimi Hendrix play live. But um, anything early in 1945, and you're in huge trouble. You're, you're definitely going to get some sort of horrible infection. So um, yeah, let's, let's stay away from that, I think. Right at the back. Oh, what kind of history do I have? I like what's called social history, which is basically the history of toilets, let's be honest. Yeah. I like toilets and underpants and smelly stuff and weird stuff and daily life. I like the history of forks. Forks are fascinating. They're really, really interesting. And you're like, no, they're not, Greg. Don't be stupid. They're really interesting. The first fork wasn't brought to England until 1608. And before that, people ate with their hands or they ate with just a knife. And the guy who brought the fork in was called Thomas Coriat. He'd been to Italy, and he was like, look at me, lads, I've got a fork. All his friends took the mick out of him. They were like, ooh, fork eater. So forks are amazingly interesting. They go back a long way. So I like ordinary, boring stuff that we all use, because it means that it's our story. It's not kings and queens. I mean, kings and queens are fine, but I like the everyday, the real stuff. You know, the history of our clothes, the history of our um, you know, hairstyles is really interesting as well. The history of sunglasses, the history of normal glasses. You know, people wore glasses in the 1200s in medieval times, uh, which is quite surprising, isn't it? We don't expect that, but that's when they were invented. Sunglasses go back to medieval China, and they were worn by Chinese judges to make sure that no one could tell which way they thought a trial was going. They were basically um, glasses that were frosted over. So ordinary things often have amazing histories, and I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. If I could meet anyone from history, I would love to meet Leonardo da Vinci, and I'd love to meet Nell Gwynn. So Nell Gwynn was a really famous actress in the 1600s, and she was really funny, and I like funny people, and I think she's probably like one of the best funny people from history. And then Leonardo da Vinci is my favorite, because he was a genius in so many different directions, but also he was what we call um, easily distracted, let's say. He was very bad at finishing things. He'd start things, and then he'd be like, oh, I'm going to go do this now. And I reckon it'd be quite fun to spend a day just watching him potter around, a bit of sculpture, a bit of invention, do a bit of painting, forget what he had for lunch. I think that'd be a nice day out and relatively safe. He'd lived to a long, long life, uh, you know, up to his probably 70s, 80s, I think. So I think a day with Leonardo would be a nice day out. Fabulous. Do one more question? One more question, yes. Yeah. Anyone? Yep, yeah, let's do over here then. Um, 
Sorry, say that again. I do horrible histories uh, kind of part time these days. I do. I've got a team of, of nerds. We've got, I mean, we, we're a children's show, but we have the most. We've got the biggest research team in British television, um, and it's very fun. We just basically every, everyone on the show has either got a PhD or a master's degree, or they're doing a PhD. Uh, and I'm sort of king of the nerds, which is very nice. And I do other stuff too. So I do podcasts on the BBC, uh, and I write books, and I work on movies, and I've just done a YouTube series that I'm not allowed to talk about. Uh, and I do a sort of a variety of things, and occasionally I teach a little bit in universities. So I'm very, very lucky that I get to work on this amazing show, but I also get to do other stuff as well. And it's nice to do a bit of everything, because I like working with other people, it's fun. So I think, yeah, that's probably all the time that we've got. Brilliant, yeah. Great, Lovely. thank you so much. Um, Sorry about the throat, sorry. <laughs> you've done very well. So thank you for this evening, but also thank you so much for everything you've done today. You have our children in the morning with Key Stage 3, with all the Key Stage 2 children this afternoon, and then with our GCSE and A-level <coughs> students as well. You've been absolutely brilliant. So let's give Greg a huge round of applause.